All right, so in the last video, I spoke about being, knowing, and then how the world comes to be known by that which is knowing. And knowing can only be because of being. So the order of the explosion into existence, let's say, the real Big Bang, not, not a Big Bang that happened in the past, but the Big Bang that is happening right now, which is in eternity. There is only now, the eternal moment of now, in which infinity is allowed to express itself. The infinite objective world of ever changing and all combinations that are possible is really what is called infinity. But eternity is not affected by that. Eternity is this being and this knowing element which you and anybody is listening to this video can prove to yourself right here and right now. Because when you just drop all the, the nonsense, all the bullshit, all the stories, all the beliefs and all the nonsense that we have gathered from this conditioned world, it is undisputable, indisputable that I am. You can prove right now if I ask you is it true that you are? Are you? And you could not say yes, anything else but yes, I am. You cannot deny the fact that I am. And that is the being element, I am. It's also clear that there is a knowing element. All that which is known is because there is this element of knowing. If it wasn't for knowing, nothing could be known. Nothing exists without knowing. In other words, it takes knowing for anything else to be known. Without knowing, nothing can be known. Because it's sensations and perceptions and everything is known by the element of knowing. And that can only be because there's being. So we've gone through that, which is what we call eternity. Once eternity meets infinity, which is existence, is born. Because once eternity, which is the ever-present eternal now, the moment of now, the eternal moment of now, meets objective world, the infinite possibility, the infinitude of all possibilities, then you basically get this kind of yin-yang structure that we have, uh, of, of we see all around in the spiritual circles and, and in all the alternative shops and whatever you want to call them and meditation things. Yin-yang is almost like eternity and infinity meeting and that is the creation of an infinite existence. Eternity, which is timelessness, which is now, which is being and knowing, and then all that which can be known. So now existence is born. There is all kinds of things. Infinite changing, dying, born, getting born and dying, coming and going, up in flames, everything, infinitude. So existence is the marriage, the joining, the bonding of those two. But existence does not exist if one in eternity. Eternity is non-existent. Being and knowing are still on itself principles that do not need any objective infinitude to, to exist. Let's say, but they don't exist, of course, because this, this is words where we falter. The fact, though, is that being and knowing, which is eternity, don't need anything to be known to be and know. The knowing element and the being element do not need any of that. It's only when infinity comes in when we get existence. And so we have an infinite existence within the eternal now. And the illusion of the lower element of, let's say, infinity, all the objects, the objective world, coming in, being tracked by memory, gives the illusion again of time, like we spoke in another video about. So it is really the marriage, the bonding of eternity with infinity that create that yin-yang play of everlasting infinitude of eternal time and existence. Existere, like they say, to stand out. It comes, it stands out because it's, there's differences. This, this is not this, and this hand is not the nose and the hair, and all the different infinitude of objects stand out from each other. That's what existere means. It's the marriage of those two that creates the possibility of infin, infinite change in the objective world because it takes place in the eternal moment of now. This is the true yin yang. This is the true um, big bang. Existence comes out of being, knowing, and then all the objects of the infinite, infinity, all the objective reality. So mind, body, world. When mind, body, world, which is infinity, join up with eternity, you get existence. And this is 
the, the Big Bang. It's like it comes out like that. Being, knowing, mind, body, world. Boom. Like a big explosion. Boom. And then it wants to know itself. And you go into the inquiry process of knowing yourself, which is the true spiritual path, which is true inquiry, which is then to recognize yourself as boom, 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 back into. This is the neti neti process. So it's the universe explodes into infinitude from eternity. Then eternity is over here. Then infinity, which is all the objects. And then once it's far out, it wants to know itself again and return to the source, which is being and nothing before that. Nothing at all. So nothing, being, knowing, mind, body, world. And then the, the torture of the, the removal, let's say, of it's being split up in a trillion infinite pieces, in a quadrillion pieces of, of expression of the one source. The source feels almost like it's scattered and incomplete and it turns back on itself. And that's this real spiritual process of returning home to pom, 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 boom, and remove back into the one complete source that is undivided, unsplit. And the funny thing about it is that finally, there is not even any division. There's not even duality in the entire thing. But that's, that's for the later process. First, the process is we've come out. We, we believe we are the body-mind over here in the world. And we have to remove the world to see that, oh, when I remove all that I see and hear and taste, there's, there is still this knowing element and this being element. And once we rest in that, we detach from the world, from our mind, from our body, we know I am prior to that. I am knowing or being knowing before any of these, because I can drop these as the objects that are known and I can remain as knowing being. And remaining as knowing being, resting in the place of knowing being, I am again close to the universe, to the original placeless place, and I return through the band of death, through this illusory thing back into nothing. Because resting as that which is just being and knowing, I return home. I detach from that which I'm not. Once that detachment process is completed, I recognize that I am all of it. And even at the furthest reaches of the universe, even at the furthest explosive level, way out there, coming from boom, 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 open up in the widest of wide, it's still the universe. It's still the one. It's still he or she or it. It's still the Brahman, the Almighty. It's still the light, the source. It never really does anything except express itself and return to itself. Express itself, and that's the pulse of the universe. At all scales, whether it's this light that is flickering, if you speed up the camera fast enough, everything is coming and going. Everything is going flickering. Everything's turning on and off. So it is just that process. The entire universe has that, whether it's at the micro level or the macro level, the entire universe is coming out of nothing into something and then returning back into exploding, imploding, exploding, imploding. And it's going so fast that this is what we got. Eternity and infinity. And they're all still timeless and unmoving, yet moving. The ultimate paradox. But um, basically... Uh, watch the videos several times if you need to come back to it maybe another time but you are eternity and only eternity facilitates infinity which is the body mind world and although that too finally in the end is also all well and there's nothing wrong with it because it is the god source itself expressing itself to return to the state of being you have to not forget the two and this world right now lives mostly here they have no inkling about knowing or being. They take them completely for granted. And so they're identified with the body-mind world and afraid to die because when these three that they, the, that which is known, the objects that are known in these three, are all there is, we know all of these will die. We know even at night when you go to sleep, everything disappears. So at death, everything disappears. And so it's a very um, frustrating existence to live in an existence where the knowing and the being element of what you truly are prior to any of this is unknown to you, forgotten. This is the great forgetting. This is real ignorance. It's the ignoring of your primary, let's say primary and secondary. And we're living in the tertiary. 
And this is not where we truly belong. This is where we are mortal, because this is a form of change, where birth and death come, and remove your families, and remove your wealth, and remove your health, and remove everything that comes and goes, because this is the world of change. And it's a, it's a nasty place to live if that's the only place you know. So the return of, of that, this is what we're about. This is what the spiritual life is about. It's about returning home and recognizing I'm not this, I'm not this, I'm not this. I'm not even knowing, I'm being. And I'm not even being, I'm the emptiness behind everything. Right? Even that can drop away and there's nothing. And then you can come back out in the world and know and be Right? And, and the body and, and everything around you, but you don't take it so seriously anymore because you know your true source is the eternal source of being knowing. 